Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Today we're looking at HP's new Spectre. They call it a 14, but it's not really. It's 13 and a half inches. Got my little box right here. Typical HP Spectre. If you haven't had one before, the boxes look like this for quite a while. And this is their new X360 two-in-one foldable makes your kitchen coffee and toast in the morning for you. This is basically their top of the line. So let's take a look here. In the box, if you're curious, basically just power cord, nothing exciting there, so we're not gonna worry about that one today. But here she is, 13 and a half inches. What's unique about the Spectre, and obviously it's still gone with the angle corners, if you're not familiar, they've done this for quite a while. You know, it's a good look. I kind of think it's cute having the power right there on the back corner so the cable's not kind of sticking out the side. For ports, we've got a USB-C, got a headphone jack, and I think, I think that's a micro SD card. I'm gonna check it out in a minute and tell you. And then a good old USB-A. So make no mistake about it, this is an Ultrabook. Very minimal on the ports, very thin. It feels great in the hand. The finish, I can't kind of explain it, but it feels just a touch different to something like an Apple MacBook Pro. Definitely feels great. Fingerprint magnet for sure. You can already see some on there and I just got it out of the box. Um, this is where it gets interesting though. We're gonna open it up and HP have taken a leaf out of the Microsoft book. The screen is an OLED 13.5 inch, not out of the Microsoft book, but it's a different ratio. Three, two for every three inches across in width, two inches tall. What that means is you are gonna get more vertical space on this than any other laptop out there. Apple have stayed with their 1610 tried and tested it's a kind of in between spot i gotta tell you of all the screen resolutions out there and certainly the screen ratios 3-2 is my favorite it's the best to work on it's the best to get things done i wish apple would just scoot up and go a little bit taller microsoft has stuck with it on all the surface line even the big 28 inch surface desktop thing you know with the foldable screen is also a 3-2 ratio screen so what do we think of this now, this is kind of a first look and a review. I've actually used this before. We can reset it just so you can see the out of the box experience. First thing that I notice on this, the keyboard is absolutely beautiful. I can't explain it. The travel, it just feels right. I don't know how many millimeters it is, but HP, congrats, you nailed it. And not only that, it feels firm. It's like a firm solid push and click and then it just stops. I think for me right now, hands down, this is maybe the nicest laptop keyboard that I've used this year in 2020. It's that good. Definitely a cut above the Dells and, uh, and really, you know, in a league of its own. I, don't, I can't think of anything else that feels as nice. Standard function keys, nice big trackpad, taking a leaf out of the Apple playbook as many manufacturers have. And obviously good old Windows touchscreen. They've stuck with it. It's tried and tested. In the box, this model came with a pen as well. And so you've actually got a um, touchscreen with the pen capability right out of the box. This is the top of the line. If you walk into a Best Buy today, this is gonna be the 1699 version, although it's currently on sale and it seems to be bouncing around 1399 on sale pretty regularly. It's gonna get you the full 360 experience. So we can kind of just leave it there while we talk about it. You are talking i7 11th gen. This is the current generation i7 processor. 16 gigabytes of memory. It's a one terabyte SSD with a 32 gigabyte Intel Optane module. That means that there is an additional amount of memory that is supposed to help kind of cache quicker in and out and keep things moving along. I don't know what else you can ask for on a laptop, honestly. A 1399 on sale for those kind of specs in the Windows world, I don't think it gets any better than this. Um, maybe you could go to the Dell outlet if you want to go Dell. I don't know that I'd choose a Dell over an HP. I think the fit and finish on this is far superior to any other Windows laptop that I've looked at, and I've used quite a few of them. I think the weight, the balance, it feels good. The hinge is great. Any point on that friction, it just stops and stays. It's not wobbling, it's not shaking, and I've seen that before. Use a Surface Book, the screen is so heavy. When you type it on your lap, it's literally vibrating. And that gets irritating after a while when you're trying to work. So I don't know what to tell you. I'm pretty impressed. So we finished the setup and we're back. 
Let's take a quick look at the screen. Look at these colors. Just look at the richness and the depth. Nothing beats an OLED. The problem takes about four hours off your battery life. So you gotta decide whether it's worth it to you or not. It's definitely rich, it's definitely vibrant. I mean, they've obviously picked a great backdrop, but you can just see the detail. This is a 3000 by 2000 DPI screen. You can see the detail here. You can, oh, it almost looks like threads of string in the, the actual glass. It looks so rich and vivid. It's beautiful. I can't, I can't communicate enough. It just looks beautiful. Windows feel snappy. Scrolling around moves everything just nice and quick. Go to my settings. They load up instantly. Now I've had some time to play with this device. So here's a few things I've noticed. If, you, if you're a Windows user, obviously you've got a very, very wide range of options. But if you are a, pro a productivity person, using this for business, using this for you know, getting, getting stuff done, and obviously that's the angle here with you know, the Techpreneur series that we're doing, the 3.2 screen is gonna limit you. Again, like I said, Microsoft Surface laptops, I think they're the mainstream ones using this ratio or you can go Dell XPS at a 1610. So you don't have a lot of choices if you don't want to be 16.9. And if you're heavier into productivity, Microsoft Word, Excel spreadsheets, Google Docs, you want the height, not the width. So given that you don't have a lot of choice, for me, this is hands down the winner. Nothing comes close on the specs, nothing comes close on the price, nothing really comes close on the build quality as long as you stay in the Windows ecosystem. But it's not all good news, I'm sorry, but it's not. Let me tell you a couple of things that I don't like about it. First of all, battery life. If you put this thing on any kind of power setting with this screen and turn that color up, I don't even think you're gonna crack six hours. You might maybe get six, six and a half, but I don't think so. From the testing that I've done and the usage that I've done, I think it's a long shot. They do a full high def version, an FHD, which lowers the resolution and goes to an IPS panel. Honestly, if you don't need the OLED, save the money, go for the IPS, you're gonna gain, everybody's estimated about three to four hours of battery life in the same size of device. So now you're talking about potentially a full work day without plugging in. Second thing I don't like, and this is a personal thing, and I'm probably a little OCD, I hate the fan noise. It's definitely one of the quieter machines. I've heard, I've heard a ton of machines make a whole lot more noise. So it's not noisy by any stretch, but you know, when you pick it up, it's got, it's got the typical fans down the side here, or rather at the bottom. You know the heat's gonna kick out, it does get warm, it's gonna get warm on your lap, and those fans come on a surprising amount, even not under load. I'm not talking about Adobe Premiere here, I'm talking day-to-day -day use, those fans are kicking on and off and on and off constantly. HP also loads on a bunch of their own software. I don't think the bloat is as bad as some devices I've seen, but there's definitely some bloat in there. You're gonna to wanna to install some of those things, but you're probably gonna to wanna to leave some of them on there because they do control specific things that HP has done to try and enhance the machine. Again, overall, this is hands down one of my favorite Windows machines, it really is. Just be mindful, you know, it's a powerful unit. It's gonna take some battery life. That OLED screen is just killing it for you and you're gonna get some fan noise, you're gonna get some heat. You're gonna decide if you can live with that or not. We're gonna compare this to the new MacBook Apple Silicon M1 in an upcoming review. Gonna do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. The MacBook's been my daily driver since it came out and I've been an Apple user for years as well as a Windows user, so I've got a pretty good handle on both. Join me for that video and I'll tell you what I think about the two of them together. Let's see which one's gonna win.